The driver of this truck isn't what most people would expect to see when they catch a glimpse of the veteran plates. How can you be a veteran? You're not retired yet. Uh, no, it's, it's not just retirees that are veterans. I'm teach. 32-year-old Jim Collins's life now includes playing in the park with his dog, TJ. This is far removed from what it has been in the past. As a sergeant with the Canadian Forces, Collins did two tours in Afghanistan. One lingering effect of his time overseas has been bouts of intense anger. Somebody complained at Starbucks because they didn't get the right size coffee and kicks the rage off like that. I'm like, you're seriously complaining about your cup of coffee right now? Collins has TJ yep. to calm and comfort him, a service dog to help him deal with symptoms associated with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, or OSI, operational stress injury. This completely calms me down. I have something else to focus on. If something triggers, I have a dog to focus on. And uh, it's just amazing that a dog can have so much of a impact on your life. Good girl. Collins associates his symptoms with OSI over PTSD. PTSD, he feels, makes you unable to do your job. Despite his struggles, he loves working as a soldier because of an unparalleled feeling of achievement. In Afghanistan, girls are going to school. Locals aren't getting blown up by IEDs because you find them first. You're pushing bad guys out of villages so that the locals can actually grow grapes and wheat and whatever they need to survive instead of having to grow poppies for heroin. But the downside of his job reared its ugly head on Collins's second tour in Kandahar City. His symptoms stem from that. December 30th, it was the first thing I thought about when I woke up, last thing I thought about when I went to sleep. On that day in 2009, Collins was out on patrol with his unit and two civilians. That included Calgary Herald reporter Michelle Lang. Civilians were a target for insurgents in Afghanistan. That day, Lang became the first Canadian journalist to be killed in the Afghan conflict. She died alongside four soldiers. <laughs> Collins watched as an IED like this one blew up the lead armoured vehicle of their convoy with a force that rattled windows four kilometres away. It was pretty intense. It was unbelievable. Um, watching it happen, I was, at first, I was just like, you know, <laughs> a lab's not supposed to fly, it weighs 23 tons. The power of the explosion blew apart the bodies of everyone in the vehicle. Five of the ten people inside died. You just feel your, your intestines sink and then it's just cold, numb sensation. And it was like that for, for a while afterwards. But for Collins and his troops, business continued on as usual. You don't really have time to grieve about it. Uh, it happens. You do your ramp ceremony, you put the guys in the herc and you, you ship them home and the next day you're back at work. Got a palm tree and a maple leaf. He has a permanent uh, reminder of those who passed on his arm. And I've got Garrett Chidley, George Mayock, Zach McCormick, Kurt Taylor, Michelle Lang, and Josh Baker. As he settles back into life in Kamloops, Collins goes where his dog is welcome. He remembers the fall in every day of the year and tells his story to anyone who wants to listen. It's something that needs to be talked about. It's not the, it's not the dark ages anymore. It's something that you know, people in your community have done this job and they should be proud of it. I am very proud of it and I don't mind telling people that I am proud of it. Uh, if they think differently, well, that's, you know, that's why I went there, so you can have your opinions.